this favor, if, you, if, you, if you're able to and willing, if we could, everyone stand up. If you could, if you're willing and able, stand up. What I would like for you to do is look at somebody that you don't know in the room. Look at somebody you don't know in the room. Look at somebody you don't know in the room. And if you would, take a second. Go introduce yourself to that person. Go introduce yourself to that person. Say, how you doing? Just say hello to that person. You can leave your row and, and just go and say hello to people. There you go. Just say hello to folks. Share hugs. That. <laughs> now that's beautiful. Now, if you could, if you could, that you met someone, what I would like for you to do is tell that person, say, hi, neighbor. Say, you are beautiful. And your reply should be, well, thank you. You're not that bad yourself. <laughs> now, if you, if you feel able to, you maybe want to cool out with that person and, stay and sit where you are right now. Or you can go back to where you were. It's up to you. Let's see how this works out. Let's see how many people stay in new places. No one. OK. Everyone went back to where they <laughs> were at. That is all right. We have a number of wonderful occasions as to why we are here this evening. One of which is the celebration of 20 years of majesty, 20 years of magic, 20 years of forward movement, progression, and doing the unexpected to make it the expected. And that is the celebration of our very own Ethics Center. We could give a round of applause for the 20 years of the Ethics Center. Cindy Cohen, get some love, get some love. Stand up, Cindy, stand up, Cindy. There you go. And the rest, of the, well, the rest of the folks, if you are a member of the Ethics Center fam, staff family, if you will, please rise and be recognized. Yes. Marcy, Marcy, everybody. Great folks. Now, we also, many of us here are FOMs. If you're not sure what an FOM is, you will recognize it once I share what that acronym stands for. That means we are friends of Marcy. And we celebrate Marcy this evening. Friends, Marcy, if you will stand up one more time, Marcy. You show love to everyone in here, some will shape or form. Thank you. Marcy has decided she's going to stay. Yes. She's she looking at me like, mm -hmm. Nothing but my 93 year old mom. We send nothing but love to you and your mom and your loved ones. One more time, give a round of applause, round of applause. Thank you very much. So we have a jam-packed evening of celebration for you all. So let's jump right into it. I promise you we will be done by 11 o'clock this evening. <laughs> this is the, you know, sometimes they have the calm before the storm. This is the excitement before the storm. That's what's happening right now. This is the excitement before the storm. As we, I, was, I was in the Shapiro Campus Center and the notice came out on the alert system that the university was closed tomorrow and there were no classes. There was a eruption of applause in the HM from all the students studying, so that was interesting. But anyway, to get us started, I want you to show love and life for everyone that comes here to pay tribute to the Ethics Center, as if you've never seen them before, but always wanted to see them. And first up, hailing from Massachusetts and one living in Springfield for a long time, artists in their own right and, ref and respectively have known each other for years now, I'm not going to try and guess ages and things like that. You all look about 20, okay? So if you would, show your love for the inc 19, <laughs> the incredible artists coming before us, the one and the only, I, I just called them JMO, but that's Michael, OJ, and our own beloved, Jane Sapp. Show them some love. <laughs> So I have known these two young men here for many years. They were in a group of mine called, the, um, called Voices of Today. 
there was a group that um, sang back in the 90s, and we've stayed in touch with each other. I've known Michael since he was in second grade, and OJ since he was in the sixth grade. Wow. And we're still <laughs> trying to make music together. <laughs> Keyword is trying. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say what a real honor it is to be a part of the celebration of the Ethics Center, the 20th anniversary. I feel like you're part of my family as well, so. next song is called If I Had the World in My Hands. And um, I do a process with young people 
where I get them to create their own songs. And this is one of the songs, actually. This song comes from Michigan. And um, I was working with a group of kids in Grand Rapids. It was their winter break, and I was sort of the activity <laughs> for, the, for the winter break. And so, you know, I saw different groups, and I just talk. I just talk to them. And then from the words that they speak, I just kind of put them together. Or sometimes we all put them together. And a song is born. But they are their words. I just give it a little shape. But it's their words. And so um, I'm going to have a, a song book coming out. <laughs> See, this is what's been so special about the Ethics Center, is that it has been a place that has welcomed uh, people doing this kind of cultural work uh, in the world. And it's given us a kind of a platform to be heard and, you know, to, and so that people also learn from the work that we're doing and that it's a space where you know, work gets shared. And, and Cindy and Dan have been, and Marcy, <laughs> I feel like you're a family and you've been wonderful to us. <laughs> Thanks. If I had the world in my hands and the key of amen. <laughs> oh, these kids were fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. That's the day that things will start to change. If I had the world in my hand, I would always want to live again. There would be no misery if I had the world in my hand. to keep it for my sake. I'd respect it like it was my mother. And praise God and love him if I had the world in my hand. to me it would be a nicer place to be if the world will listen to me I'd heal the sick and set all slaves free and there would be no
So times can get hard. And I know uh, the Ethics Center has had a share of both hard times, good times, and great times. But this is a song that um, I like to do uh, to lift myself up, especially when times are hard, to remind myself that you know there's still an inner strength and there's still support all around me and that I'm still here. <laughs> I still have hope. I still have hope with all the things I've been through. I still have hope. I still have hope. I still have hope with all the things I've been through. I still have hope. I still have joy, I still have joy, with all the things we've been through, I still have joy, I still have joy, I still have joy, with all the things I've been through, I still have joy, everybody help me. I still have faith, I still have faith, with all the things we've been through, I still have faith, I still have faith, I still have faith, with all the things we've been through, I still have faith. songs of determination. No matter what, <coughs> we're going to keep on keeping on. And this song comes from Greene County, Alabama. And uh, it's also in the songbook. <laughs> Ticket, climb aboard, 
Let's show some more love, show some more love, show some more love. Let's keep this celebration going. Next up to the microphone, this senior also has an album streaming live right now. You can go check it out. It's called The Price of Paradise. Friends and family, show your love for the one and only Marcelo Brossener. Hi, everybody. So this first poem, first of all, yeah, my name is Marcelo. I'm a senior here at Brandeis. And I've been involved in the Ethics Center in various ways during my time here. And so I wanted to give one more shout out to Marcy for all that she's done in her time here. I mean, she's probably getting sick of it at this point, but like, you know, we have to give, give thanks. So appreciate it. So bear with me for this first poem. I, with this being the 20th anniversary of the Ethics Center, I wrote a poem that spells the word ethic 20 times. <laughs> so just bear with me, yeah. Evidence that hate is crumbling eternally truly hinders ignorant compulsion, enticing ties honed in camaraderie etched through harmonious inspiration, cutting even the hardest incline closed effortlessly, though harsh in condition. Every thought holds immeasurable complexity, evaporating, tentatively hovering inside clouds, exiting their home in choreographed expertise, trickling hysterical insight, crashing elegantly towards home, indicating creation. Eventually, training hones instinctive care, expelling thoroughly harbored infighting, conflict expected to happen in cycles. Extend two hands into clarity, easily traceable, Hold it close, enter territory hooked into curiosity, equally trusting history if connected. Empower truth, holy if communal. Embrace the hope it commands. So this second poem is called Rise. That first one was called Ethic, if you didn't, if you didn't figure it out. <laughs> um, the second poem is called Rise, and it's generally about dreaming, um, because I was a 2016 Sorensen Fellow, um, and that's a fellowship that funds students to do social justice work anywhere uh, in the United States or abroad. And unfortunately, it's come to a close, but um, it, it provided so many students with amazing opportunities to figure out what they're passionate about and learn about themselves. So th my Sorensen Fellowship began with a dream um, so this song, this poem is called Rise. Head on pillow, moon peeking through the blinds, I doze off only to rise and reach out, plucking the moon from the sky and cusping it like a newborn, bright and nocturnal, present and momentous. The moon is playful, but I feel selfish knowing it is for all, so I put it back only to wake up to a sun too hot to handle, so I keep my hands by my sides and run through ray showers. Nice and clean, spick and span, awake and aware, yet after a long day, worn and weary, I wind all the way down, lights out, head on pillow, moon peeking through the blinds, I doze off only to rise. Thank you.
So for my Sorensen Fellowship, I worked at Workroom 4. It's an art studio in Hanoi, Vietnam. And so the ultimate uh, vision was that I would be hoping, uh, helping to produce an art exhibition of my grandfather, a Cuban grandfather's artwork documenting uh, the Vietnam War from the Vietnamese perspective. And so this poem is called Hanoi, uh, and it's about my time in Hanoi. A communal connection, thick as the air it sits in. Hanoi feels wholesome. The call of street vendors, the smell of their food, and the sight of its preparation suspend themselves within a single stroll, entangled like the wires above my head on telephone, telephone poles. Relentless traffic backed by harmonious honking of motorbikes keeps me on my toes, head on a swivel with sign after sign in my periphery, bearing text I cannot decipher nor recite. And so the tongue is secluded, leaving me to speak the universal dialect of body language, which I can now speak almost while blindfolded. And I am molded by the lack of malice in Hanoian hearts for a war waged by my homeland. Instead, in meeting folks, I find curiosity, affection, and love welcoming me into their home and grounding me. As I retrace the footsteps of my grandfather, awakening his spirit, and I hear it amidst the hustle and bustle of life, stern but sweet, firm but subtle. Thank you very much. All right, Marcelo, thank you very much. Show some more love for Marcelo. <laughs> Streaming live, paradise, the price of paradise. Just so that you all know, a couple things were going on. 20 years ago, I'm selling 20 years of greatness. Here we go, 20 years ago, Toy Story, <laughs> the first entirely computer animated film hit theaters. The final Calvin and Hobbes comic strip was printed. Beanie Babies yeah. stole the hearts of kids. Someone's a Beanie Baby fan right there, okay. <laughs> Millions of girls were devastated over the death of pop star Selena. Newt Gingrich was selected as Times Man of the Year. Mm-hmm. Starbucks started selling Frappuccinos. <laughs> the hit rock band Grateful Dead broke up. Sad, sad times. A little dating website known as Match.com was launched. Pogs covered the playroom floors of kids everywhere. <laughs> and I'll do some, some more later, but the 10th thing that was happening was Sony released the PlayStation. Look at that. All because of the ethics sensor. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Friends and family, welcome into our midst, the one and only Liz Bradfield. Yeah. Welcome, Liz Bradfield. <laughs> What's a pog? I'm actually serious. I'll ask later. What is a pog? It's a small cardboard disc that you throw a small metal disc at to get the very high. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't think I missed too much then. Um, Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this celebration. Cindy Cohen and Tom King at CAST have been um, such a force to welcome me into this community, which feels so vital, and I'm really, really grateful. So I'm going to read three poems. Um, I work a lot uh, with issues of environmental confusion, and this poem is called Misapprehensions of Nature. How many of you in 2008 remember the video that was going viral about the guys reuniting with their lion in Africa? Okay, so this poem kind of addresses that, recounts that, and it ends with a quote from uh, the two men. And the story is retold in the poem. But I'm, I'm really fascinated with how we smear our ideas of what things should be across what we're looking at, myself included. Um, and all of the natural history facts in here are true, or were true at one point. Misapprehensions of nature. That bees are improper because they have a queen, no king. That crows plant acorns, twist them into soil properly spaced, 
to serve as future roosts and manta rays wrap divers in the dark blankets, mantilla of their wings. That dolphins love us, that deer love us, and the kit brought in and given milk is just as happy, that we can know what it is for a fox to be happy. Two men bought a lion at Herod's, reared it in their small apartment, released it reluctantly to Savannah. And then, years later, sure that it would know them, went and called its pet name into the grasses. It ran toward them, that they would be mauled, that perhaps they should be mauled. But it tumbled them, licked their faces. Everyone was crying. We were crying. Even the lion was nearly crying. And maybe it was. Um, I try and talk with my students a lot about um, where you find inspiration, what poems prompt you. And I think we're at a really exciting time now for poetry in the world. There are so many amazing voices that are telling new stories. And I think it's changed the way that all of us need to um, share our understanding of our own lives, positioning ourselves in our poems. So I was thinking a lot about Bob Hickok's poems and also the poetry of Aracellus Germay, who wrote this amazing book about Eritrean diaspora called The Black Maria. Um, and this is a poem after them called Learning to Swim. Now 45, having outlasted some of myself, I must reflect. What if I hadn't been held by my mom in the YWCA basement pool, her white hands slick under my almost toddler armpits, her thumbs and fingers firm around my ribs, which is to say lungs, held gently as a liverwurst sandwich and pulled kindly under. What if I hadn't been taught to trust water might safely erase me, those years I longed to erase or at least abandon care of my disoriented, disdained body? I might have drowned instead of just ebbed, never slid from given embankments into this other natural course. Drift and abundance in what she offered, the wider indifferent ocean of trade and dark passage not yet mine to reckon. And so now, sharp tang of other waters known, I am afloat, skin chilled, core warm, aware of what lurks and grateful to trust and delight and our improbable buoyancy. And then I'll end, I'll end with a snow day poem because it's snowing tomorrow. Um, I lived for a long time in Alaska. I miss it quite a bit. And winter sports is the only way to enjoy Alaska. Um, I mentioned in here a cabin with nails in the door, so you know, bear safety in Alaska is a real thing. The poem also talks about ski joring. Does anyone here know what ski joring is? Well, tomorrow is your day to find out. Um, it's a kind of cross-country skiing. You probably saw it in Olympics, the skate skiing, but in addition to skate skiing, you have a harness and a dog is pulling you. It's really fun. S-K-I-J-O-R. Yeah. Getting out. How in love with myself I was on the iced over river, Alaska range sprawled miles around, skiered trails of snow machines across the low hills, spruce and spruce, and a few hours of thin blue sky, the day. Laced into three pins, sweating in the perfect ten above, ski jor harness snug on my hips, at last I was in this February, air silent of most birds, not in Anchorage's Tacoma-ness, its five lanes and conveniences, but on skis, in the mountains, an old dog pulling me toward a cabin of logs, its weather door a thorning of nails, point out to deter bears. Do you know this moment? When you expand at last from the clench of the daily, find yourself bodily glad, at last discovering pride, or whatever word we don't have for such pure chest bursting, not something to be stuffed into a pocket, but vast and permissible. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To develop effective responses to conflict and injustice by offering innovative approaches to coexistence, strengthening the work of international courts, and encouraging ethical practice in civic and professional life. Friends and family, that is the mission of the International Center for Ethics, Justice, and Public Life. Show some more love. That's the mission statement. And with that, more thunderous applause for the newest member of the board, that is, the one and only, make sure I got the last name correct. Here we go. Yes, Jermaine Ingram. Show the love. One more time, Jermaine Ingram. Can I assist you? You good? Yeah, I'm good. And God stepped to the edge of the earth and spat out the seven seals. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. To be. Yeah. 
Trust water again. Maybe when I'm ten, maybe then, maybe when the people who pretend to be on bathing me in poison, when will I escape from the sea? Maybe when a dove is near. Listen here, let's be clear. You never lose the taste of leaded water on your tongue. <laughs> Whom to trust when it's us stuck inside the vortex of a storm? Whom to blame for the shameful way that people use people? Our leaders deceitfully play us again. And again, when will I escape from this rage? Maybe as I age, turn the page, start a phase when sleeping doesn't resurrect the stage of using false words. When will I emerge from this dread? Maybe when I'm dead, cold and dead, better said. When children aren't made hostage by the politics of blame and segregation, when the purity of air we breathe is more important than wealth. Bottom line, when science isn't shuttered from the public for interest of denial, that's when I will trust water.
like move like that was powerful like I mean everybody's been great but I just okay a couple things that you all didn't even see that I got to see like when I said Jermaine's name Jermaine had no idea Jermaine was next it was like oh oh, oh I guess I gotta go but then just transform that quick that's that's a gift right there and then when you made the water out of the sheet that was crazy that was and I don't know if the folks over here could see, as she was spinning, she was wrap, whipping up the water around her feet. I know how to trip at least four or five times doing that artistry right there. And then you brought it back. It was just so powerful. Then the water piece, I'm thinking about all of the, think about all the places and people that don't have water. They're getting ready to lose water, running out of water, water running dry. And then water that has destroyed some places and trying to rebuild. And all this frozen water coming here tomorrow kind of thing. But in the context of that, this thing coming tomorrow seems so small. Juxtaposed to all that was in what you just shared with us. Like it really was extremely moving and powerful for me. So I applaud you again. Thank you very much. That was majesty. That was great. <laughs> So, I don't know, we got to transition. You people in different, so just to help us transition to a, 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 a different move, I'm going to do the remaining 10 things from 20 years ago. Here we go. 20 years ago, 98, the final episode of Full House aired. <laughs> Folks are still sad about that. eBay made it to hit his back, like Roseanne and Martin is coming back. All my Martin fans. I'm looking forward to seeing Martin come back. Anyway, uh, eBay made its debut online. Who knew that? Been getting money for 20 years now. Here we go. The George Foreman Grill was first released. <laughs> How many of you own a George Foreman Grill? That still works. All right, okay. George Foreman. I was watching a documentary about this last night, still in a place about it. O.J. Simpson was found not guilty of murdering his wife. Disney's the most historically depiction of Pocahontas <laughs> hit theaters. Just joking. Nobody believe me. I'm just joking about that, being sarcastic. Um, Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette. One album of the year at the Grammys that year. Courtney Cox was named People's Most Beautiful Woman. Who you think was named the most sexiest man alive? Take a guess. You are absolutely, I, yeah, I, I would have chose me, but you are absolutely correct. Brad Pitt, she was the sexiest man alive. It should have been Denzel, anyway. Should have been Denzel and... Probably who? Angela. 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 I thought she said Mary J. Anyway, <laughs> or J Lo or something. Okay. Uh, jelly sandals were all the rage. <laughs> they still in. Now this one's gonna throw people for a loop. Windows 95 was released. Some people are like, what is that? <laughs> what is that? Windows 95. In 98. <laughs> and finally, because the Ethics Center, the International Ethics Center, brings people together. Fame guitarist Slash joined Michael Jackson on stage at the MTV Music Video Awards for a performance of Black or White. That was the big deal. At that time, I remember people, I remember that's when MTV showed videos. So anyway, that was, those are 20 things that happened 20 years ago. Some folks, and in this, in this 20 years ago, let's see, if you were born in the 2000s, clap your hands. Thank you. I'm looking at you. Okay. If you were born in the 90s, clap your hands. Oh. Y'all barely know what a phone booth is. Okay. <laughs> if you were born in the 80s, clap your hands. Oh. People know about Knight Rider. Okay. 
If you were born in the 70s, clap your hands. All right. No, we're going to celebrate these folks because it gets gangsta from this moment on. These people have been waiting to clap. If you're born in the 60s, make some noise. This is, all right, you go. If you're born, let's see, I'm going to go for it. If you're born in the 50s, what? See, look at that. People are like, yes. Like, what? They like, say our decade again. If you were born in the 40s, what? Mm, I like, yeah, man, we look good. If you were born in the 30s, just gonna wave your hand, right? He's like, right here, right here. You clap. He was like, mm, right. And where, who else? Where else? Somebody, up, oh, raving the hands. 30s is like, okay, we here, recognize. This is noise. <laughs> Let's keep going. In the 20s, people looking like, hmm? Just to make sure. 20s or better. Anybody? Anyone? Anyone? So, round of applause for everybody. We got a multitude of decades and generations that are present in this evening. And the culmination of all of that glory and beauty and just defiance of bowing down and resistance, the one and only, that is a beautiful jacket that you have on. It is fantastic, looking glamorous. Friends and family, welcome the one and only, celebrated Cindy Cohen, show her some love. Uh, I just wanted to mention that um, when we were curating this evening, we sought artists who are really connected to the center's work and who sort of in some way touch on the different kinds of work we do. Working with artists and communities to document their practice and to share their work with each other. Uh, working with students at the center, as in Marcelo and so many other wonderful, beautiful students, LaShawn and others. Um, working with the faculty, and we so appreciate the support of the faculty at Brandeis for our work in our advisory committee and in teaching classes and um, participating in all kinds of projects. And with Jermaine's presence acknowledging, uh, in addition to her amazing talent and power as an artist, um, the contributions of the International Advisory Board to the center, many of whom are here. Um, and uh, we had hoped to be able to share with you the work of Babu Ayindo, a Kenyan artist in residence who would be performing a story tonight if it weren't for the snowstorm tomorrow, but he had to get back to Kenya in time to do his work. Um, but that representing, a, you know, in a small way, the reach of, our, of, a, of the center internationally. And we asked him to tell a story about, that involved the themes of justice to honor our program in international justice and, um, in society. So um, I just want to take this uh, moment to thank all the people here who have supported our work and uh, to say personally, and I think on behalf of my colleagues, what a privilege it has been to work for 20 years at the center, to have this platform to think, to create, to connect with such amazing people as those of you here in this room and uh, feel very thankful to Brandeis and to the center for allowing these possibilities to emerge. And it'll be interesting to see what comes next, next 20 years. But to um, close us out, we invited Jane Sapp and her friends to come back um, and uh, leave us singing. Um, and as Jane mentioned, we're very thrilled to be publishing a book of her songs and stories that will capture the essence of her cultural work practice and be a resource for music educators and chorus leaders. And we're gonna be uh, talking about it till next, next year, early 2019, when it finally comes out, published by Brandeis University Press. So, Jane. <laughs>
You know, I am so happy to be here. Uh, it's an old song that says, I'm glad to be in the number one more time. And I think these are really some, these are really some trying days in our country. Um, but yet, I, I think one thing that the artist gets to see is the, that part where there's still the human being, the humanity, the beauty of the, humanity, of the human spirit still wanting to survive, still wanting to live, still wanting to love, still wanting to create, still wanting to be. And so I'm happy to be here and I'm so happy to be a part of the Ethics Center that has sort of carried on and nurtured that spirit and really honors uh, especially the work of artists um, in social transformation, in peace building, in justice building. So um, Ethics Center, hi Marcy, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> so to the Ethics Center, thank you so much for welcoming me and now my two friends in, into your family. Thank you.
so pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Sound beautiful. I was working with a group of high school students um, in Connecticut, and I had been invited to the school to talk about diversity. And so, and to kind of, you know, through song, celebrate diversity. So when I went into this first class, which was a chorus class, and I, the teacher introduced me, said what I was gonna do, and I asked them, you know, so w w you know sort of like, what, what do you think about this, you know, diversity, whatever, and they said they didn't wanna talk about it. It was a predominantly white school. And they said, been there, you know, sort of been there, done that, <clears throat> and we don't need to talk about this anymore, and, that's, and we don't wanna talk about it. So I said, okay. You know, you don't want to talk about it, let's not talk about it. But let's talk about what it's like to be in the chorus, since this is a class of, you know, what does that, what does that sound like to you? What does that feel like? So they started talking about, you know, how they felt about being in the chorus. Then I thought, mm-hmm. So the, the first verse was in the first class, when I went to the second class, I sang with the first class, had sung, and they wanted to add to it. So the song kept getting, you know, new verses as I've went, as I've gone uh, to new places. But it started with this school and these group of kids that told me they did not want to talk about diversity. So here's one note won't make harmony. That's what they named their song. Every person is a piece of the puzzle and everyone is complete together and every note is a part of the calling and that's what harmony is Take different people and put them together. You'll find strength, wisdom, and
from the group that didn't want to talk about diversity. Um, <laughs> what's the next song? Oh, there's one. You know, um, I was thinking something that Babu said today. I don't know how many of you heard his um, lecture discussion, but um, he talked about, you know, affirming First, affirm the people. Affirm the creativity of the people. Af af just af affirm who, who they are and why they are and the importance of who they are. And that to build that as, your f as the first layer, so to speak, is kind of the way I heard it, in the work in communities. I work in a lot of different communities, and so I really agree with him that the first thing is to just to be an affirming place to say, yes, you are right, and you have knowledge, and you know, be a mirror that reflects back to the community all of its strengths and possibilities. And so this is a song that comes from Selma, Alabama. It was written by um, an activist, lawyer, cultural worker there, uh, Rose Sanders. And she wrote this because um, you know, there was a lot of tracking going on in the schools. Um, I know throughout the South, probably throughout the country as well. And, um, and I, do you all know what I mean by tracking? You put kids on different track and you don't ever get out of it no matter what you. So uh, <clears throat> she and her group of young people that she <clears throat> works with wrote this song. Oh, 
Back in the 90s, um, I was asked to create a song. This was for the, um, the Ms. Foundation had this uh, kind of economic development conference. Okay. <laughs> economic development conference and um, for women. And so they asked me to create a song, you know, that everybody could sing and that it would be uplifting and inspiring and but you know, more kind of a sense of resistance, right? So um, on the plane, <laughs> on the way there, um, I did the song. And so the first time I heard them sing it, it was pretty overwhelming, but uh, it's around, and that means that you have to sing it around with me. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you the words and, and the melody, and then we'll break up into parts. Does that sound exciting? Yeah. That's good. Okay. So is you want me to do it in C or B? We have come too far. We won't turn around. We'll flood the streets with justice. We are freedom bound. Everybody sing it with us. We have come too far. We won't turn around. We'll flood the streets with justice. We are freedom bound. Once more all together. We have come too far. We won't turn around. We'll flood the streets with justice. We are free. David on back, you'll be number three. And Michael, you'll start them off. And this first five rows, you'll be singing with me. Okay. okay. All right. I'm glad for that. We got it. Okay, we got it. So, ready? So, you remember, you got it all day. Want to do it once more? Or we don't need it. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Uh -huh. 